Ladies and gentlemen, I never thought we would be here, but uh, here I am reviewing a remake of Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door for Nintendo Switch. What a time to be alive. What a glorious thing. One of the things that makes The Thousand Year Door so great is that the battle structure is better than I think any other Paper Mario game. The only one that, kind of, the only one that comes close is the original Nintendo 64 game. Um, but this one is just, I think, even better because you've got even more stuff going on in this battle system, but at the same time, it doesn't feel complicated. It's really clever how they said, what if the battles were done in front of an audience on a stage? And then you can like rile up the audience and get them on your side and they give you, you know, a variety of things like they can throw you, they can throw you helpful items. They can throw tin cans at you that can hurt you. All sorts of like stage related gimmicks happen in this game. And I think it's just really wonderful that you're playing to a crowd. It's just, it works so well well. Uh, it's really kind of ingenious. Um, so yeah, the battle system is really great. I love how you can, you know, you earn these little special abilities that you use the, uh, the stars to give you like special things and so many different enemies. Like, man, it's just, I'm not even somebody who likes battling in an RPG. Like this is the only RPG series that I think I like. I'm not even too keen on Mario and Luigi. I don't hate it, but I kind of feel like it's not as good as it isn't as good as this. Um, so yeah, it, it turned an RPG disliker like me into an RPG lover when it comes to Paper Mario. So yeah. I also really love how this game tends to, it, it's like it really plays up the paper concept more, but without being obnoxious. So like Mario can be cursed. I really love this. Like there's these little spooky chests and you there's like a little spirit inside talking to you and he tricks you to go and find a key and open up the chest. And then when you do that, he turns on you and he's like laughing at you and there's some really funny writing there. Which before, in case I forget to say it, this game is really well written. It's got such a great sense of humor. I believe the majority of the, the writing was translated by Nate Bildorf, who's one of my favorite Nintendo uh, of America employees. But yeah, really good writing on characters. It's pretty funny game. But all these different curses that Mario uh, is uh, given throughout your adventure give you these paper abilities. You can fold into a paper plane and soar to a platform you couldn't get before. You can turn into a little paper boat and go around in the water. You can roll up into a little paper tube and that allows you to go underneath areas and roll around in ways that you couldn't otherwise. You know, you can scrunch down as a piece of paper and then launch into the air and grab onto like a pipe or something. So basically what I mean to say is there's a lot of fun paper abilities. You can turn on your side and then Mario can squeeze between little cracks in a wall and find little secret areas and stuff like that. It, it, it never feels obnoxious and gimmicky in the way that the modern Paper Mario games play up the paper. This feels fun because they played up like, you're cursed, oh, Mario's cursed, and now he can be a paper boat, and uh, so they did it just right. This game has the right amount of paper references and paper animations and everything. Another huge part of the gameplay are the partners, of course. Holy Toledo, I have no idea why they got rid of partners in a Paper Mario game. To me, they are so quintessential to the experience. I know all of these partners, of course, because I played the game, as I said, but just going back, and I haven't played this game all the way through for quite a while, several years. So it was just, it's just been so fun playing through this all over again, even though I know what's coming. It just, it's sort of like I'm in love all over. Um, this is like going on a second honeymoon with Paper Mario, the Thousand Year Door. But yeah, the partners are so great. So you take a Goomba or a Koopa Troopa or any of these like typical Mario characters and then you put different clothing on them. You give them a backstory. You give them a little attitude of some kind and then you give them all these unique gameplay attributes and and you can solve puzzles and do things in the worlds and in the battling that are all related to the characters these these um these partner characters like I mean, going forward, my god, you have to bring partner characters back. I love them. You get the little Yoshi. There's a bunch of different colors you can get. It's not randomized, but, you know, you, it's certain things you have to do. Uh, so you might get an orange Yoshi. I got a blue Yoshi. And you can name them. I named my blue Yoshi Splash because he looks like pool water and it's summertime. Uh, you know, you've got Madame Fleury and she can blow wind and blow off like pieces of paper in the background to reveal like hidden secrets. Goombella will like tell you, it's just, and Koops has the ability where you can, you jump on him and his turtle shell goes flying, his Koopa shell goes flying and can grab stuff for you. It's just like, man, the partner characters are why they're like such a load bearing 
part of what makes Paper Mario great. And so it, it just, it really shines brightly in this game, seeing all these characters. And if you're playing for the first time, I would assume that you're like always excited to see who am I gonna meet next? You know, every chapter, you meet somebody new and everything. They added some quality of life things in this game that I think are absolutely great. The first one relates to the partners. Now you can switch between your partners when you're walking around in a level uh, with this little partner wheel. You just press and hold the L trigger and it pulls it up and you quickly rotate it and you grab a new partner. It is so smooth, it's so good. I love it, that's such a big improvement. Another thing they did that is a quality of life improvement in the game, there are a few others, but here's just another example, is you have all these pipes that will warp you, they'll warp you to the different locations that you've uh, you know, visited throughout your journey. But now they're all just located in one central room in the rogue port sewers and boy that is so much better it's so much more convenient especially when you have to go back and forth between levels when you're doing like side quests and things so that's another update they made to the gamecube game or from the gamecube game uh that i think is undeniably better it is so nice so yeah it's uh it's really nice good stuff um, oh, and the style, I forgot to mention, in the battle, the like little style moves you can pull off, like you'll jump on an enemy, and then when you're in the air, you press the action button again, and Mario will do like a little style move, he'll flip around, and like, yoo-hoo, and stuff like that, and it like really builds up the audience. It's so rewarding to do that. The battles are so like intricate, so many little things you can know about, but at the same time, anybody can play it, and, and you master it on your own pay at your own pace and stuff, so just really love the battles in this game. Let's talk about the visuals a bit. Uh, it's perfect. Uh, well, I guess I should I should mention the frame rate is 30 frames a second instead of 60. I know the internet has been talking a lot about that in regards to this game. I, I don't know, really, I, I love 60 frames a second. Don't get me wrong, I want more games to be 60 frames a second. Yes, I know the original GameCube version of The Thousand Year Door runs at 60, and this one runs at 30. But honestly, while playing this game, I don't feel like it's chugging along or looking kind of blurry or choppy. It looks great still, so I don't think the 30 frames a second is really that big of a deal in this particular game. And I mean, guys, this isn't just a port of the GameCube game that runs at half the frame rate. This game is like visually totally redone, running on a brand new, more modern engine. The visuals are night and day between the GameCube game and the Switch game, so I gotta mention this, 30 frames a second yeah that's not great but it's not really a huge it's not a hindrance at all i'm okay with it for this game i don't know how you improve upon this it is so great for one thing they got rid of the annoying white outlines around characters i hope those never return there's not like you know in color splash and in the origami king they have these stupid white outlines around the characters it makes the characters look like they don't belong in the environments they stand out too much from the environment and so it doesn't feel natural. It doesn't make the characters believable that they live in these little worlds. Uh, it also made the animation way crappier. Everything was like two frames a second in those two games. But now the white outline is gone. The animations look so much better. They're smooth. There's a lot more detail to them. They've added a lot of like character poses. Cause like if you play the GameCube game and you're playing this game, I think you're gonna constantly be excited by like, oh, that's a new little pose. Or, oh, they didn't animate like that before. That was something I was constantly noticing uh, while playing. That was just really cool. Seeing all those new sprites of the characters, all the little new uh, the poses, the animations, that was all really Really great but this you know like i'd mentioned in the visuals like this is just the right amount of paper origami king looks very flat to me and it always has everything's just like a flat color they worked so hard to make everything look like it was made out of torn construction paper and cardboard and honestly it just makes the worlds feel fake and cheap and stupid it makes them feel like a little, like a five-year-old's art project or something. But here, in this remake of The Thousand Year Door, you've got some little papery things for sure, but it looks more like, it looks more like a pop-up book, which is the way to go, I think. So a lot of the textures have more details in them, for example. You'll have little like checkered patterns or dot patterns or something. There's just more of a richness into the, into the texture work of everything. And they didn't obsess over everything needing to look like it's made out of construction paper. So again, this is the perfect look for a Paper Mario game. Lots of fun little paper transitions. Oh, you're in a car, you're in a train, and you're going into one of the rooms. Oh, so it like peels the peels the wall off to reveal what's inside of the room. Then when you exit, it glues it right back on. There's a lot of things like that, little transitions that are paper. 
and it's really charming and really fun. Oh, and I should also mention the really great modern lighting system they got this game running on. It looks so nice. The the, the lighting and the, the shadows and everything, they really just make the, the world and the characters pop like never before. And it also helps to add ambience to a lot of these chapters, a lot of the levels. Like, for example, when you're in Twilight Town, you really get a much greater sense of, of atmosphere because of these great shadows and the great lighting. I really like in the winter area, for example, it's just kind of like a bluish glow. They really just captured the look of what it's like on a, cl you know, a cloudy, cold, snowy day. Um, so yeah, the lighting and the shadows are really great. There's also a lot of like reflections going on and, and you know I've seen some people say like why would paper be reflective, you know But actually there is a lot of paper like craft paper that is um, kind of shiny and reflective So I just really like the way it looks and the reflections that you see on like the ground and sometimes the walls and stuff um, They're really top-notch. They feel kind of modern. They don't look like it's a, a cheap fake reflective thing It's like really nice and uh uh, pretty authentic looking. It looks pretty good. Pop-up book, not a five-year-old's construction paper diorama. This is the way to go. The soundtrack is another part of this game that is very much new. You can get a little badge that will let you listen to the original GameCube music, which is very good. I like that. There definitely are some tracks that are better in the GameCube game for sure. The more I've played the game though, and the more I've listened to the new tracks, I've kind of warmed up to them. I still think the original soundtrack is better for the GameCube. It's kind of the purest form of these ideas, and this new Switch game feels more like everything is remixed. But that's not bad, you know? I have a true nostalgia and fondness for the original music. And even ignoring my nostalgia, I still would say the purity of the original tracks mostly is better. But that doesn't mean the Switch version's remixes are bad or worse. They're just another take. They tend to be more cluttered in the amount of instruments they use. They're definitely bigger. They're more, as I've called them, they're more bombastic sounding. Which can be good and bad, but I love the fact that we have all new, we have an entire soundtrack that is, we, we, we have the original soundtrack remixed in its entirety. That in and of itself is very exciting to me as a longtime fan of this, uh, this game. They also added in a surprising amount of new music, little music cues, but then also like full music tracks that were never in there that fill out the soundtrack more. There's gotta be like 200 tracks of music in this game. It really is something pretty special and, uh, and I love it quite a bit. Some of the tracks that I liked better in the original, just to throw it out there, Boggly Woods, I think the original version is better, it's more pure, it's more calming. The new version adds these Asian instruments into it that I don't like. It, it changes the feel of the environment when you're playing and I don't like that. Also, I think a lot of people will say the Glitzville music has a really, I, I think this one is just kind of a bad remix. It takes the main melody of the track and it kind of puts it way in the background and then just have these like Asian instruments uh, over on top of it and it doesn't sound good. So there's a few where I go, oh no, no, this isn't as good as the original, but mostly I just appreciate the whole soundtrack. There is a lot of replay value. As I'm replaying through this game, I'm noticing how beefy it really is. There's so much to see and do. This is a very like full game, very dense. So one of the things, because this is an RPG that you can collect, are these little badges. You get them in shops, you find them all, well, not all over the place, but you'll find them throughout your entire adventure. And they're hidden in various ways. A lot of them you need to use the ability of your partner characters or Mario's cursed abilities to actually receive them, you know, to find them and collect them. So the badges are really fun, and they do a bunch of things in battle, and some of them even in the overworld. And so trying to collect all the badges is definitely going to give you a lot of replay value. There's also Shine Sprite boxes that you will find. Collecting Shine Sprites allows you to level up your partner characters in a little fortune teller room in Rogueport. And of course you want to do that because they learn new moves in battle and you know, so collecting all the Shine Sprites is another big form of replay value that I really love. You can also collect music in a jukebox as well as concept art. This has me very excited. I love that they added concept art that you can view uh, by collecting all the different um, star pieces. Then eventually when you collect all the star pieces in every chapter, it will unlock concept art for that chapter. I love this. Seeing original concept art for the Thousand Year Door that was made in like the year 2003 blows my mind. I would have paid money just to have that in like a little art book. I would have given like 25, 30 bucks for that. 
it's very exciting to see that stuff. I've been like giddy collecting that. So you better believe I'm going to find all the uh, star pieces in, in every chapter in order to get all that. So a lot of replay value again. There's also a tattle log. When you're battling enemies, you can have Goombella tattle on them. And then that shows you like this description of the enemy. And that puts it in the tattle log book. So I really want to, and maybe everybody wouldn't want to do this, but for me, playing through this game again, I'm like, oh, I got to tattle on every single enemy so that I complete that book of all the uh, enemies. So I've been doing that. You've also got stuff like mini games at the Pianta Parlor. These are mini games based on Mario's cursed abilities, like flying in the airplane and seeing how far you can go, little paper boat stuff. It's really fun to go back and, and gamble in the Pianta Parlor. I think this is another little form of, of replay value. And... You can help others. There's a little help center and all the different NPC characters, the characters that you encounter throughout your adventure, they have little problems that they want you to help with. So you can take those on and you get paid through coins or maybe badges or maybe some other special little things. So helping all the other characters is a big uh, part of replay value. And then finally, I do want to mention, I said I'm not going to turn this into an overview, but here I am. I'm just talking about everything. It's just because I'm excited to talk about all the pieces of this game. You can also do um, some cooking in this game, just like the original Paper Mario, and combining ingredients, you can make all these fun little uh, meals and uh, delicious foods. And of course, when you eat them, they do a variety of things to help Mario out in battles and, and some other ways. So it's just fun to like figure out like recipes. And you get some of them in the game through emails that you will, you will receive on your Game Boy Advance SP mail system thing, which is very cute, of course. So there's a lot of replay value. This game, like I said, this is a dense game. This is a thick game. This is a Brazilian butt lifted game. It's big, it's thick, it's luscious. Okay, anyways, so I love the game. It goes without saying, I, I really, you know, there's a few chapters replaying through them. I felt like, oh, this one maybe isn't as good as I remember. The Glitzville chapter, it's very uh, heavy on battling and it is repetitious up until like halfway. You're just doing the same stuff, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. So it is a little repetitive. And it does make me think it would have been more interesting if the enemies that you're battling in the ring were original designs, like a real wrestler, you know? Like take a Goomba and put like a pair of underwear on his head and have like, you know, a mask or something. And he's like, you know, Stinky Pete or something. I don't know. Just come up with some weird wrestlers that you only see in the glitz pit because in the game The actual game it's just a bunch of enemies you see in the normal game Except for the final guy, but you know, so I don't know there. It's a little repetitive takes a little bit of time to get going um, But that's like the only chapter that stood out to me is like this one isn't as good as I remember, but it's still okay It's still fun. I, I Know it's like a, it's a review and I should be like pointing out things. I didn't like there's really not many Honestly, like this is just a joy to play through. I highly recommend this game. I don't want to oversell it. You'll have your own opinions and you'll have things that you like and don't like. But man, this is like the ultimate Paper Mario experience. The only game that comes close is the Nintendo 64 game. They're both such wonderful experiences. We are blessed to have this remade. I'm sorry, but we are. I can't think of any other way. I, do, I generally don't like to kiss Nintendo's butt, but man... This is one of those instances where I am genuinely thankful that this game exists. I can't say enough good things about it. I'm sure there are some things I've left out, but just let me wrap it up by saying um, the visuals are perfect. It's everything I wanted it to be. The, the partner characters are wonderful. All the different abilities you gain. Battling is genuinely exciting. The game is funny. It's so well written. The boss battles are fun and silly. There's so much to explore and see and collect. The new soundtrack is pretty good. Some of the tracks I don't like, but okay, that's gonna happen, right? You know? And music is subjective anyway, so you might disagree. I'm gonna do something. I mean, I, I hate to just say buy this game because it's such a stupid thing to say in a review, but I'm going to say it. Buy this game. I don't think you'll be disappointed. And if this game does really well, it may be 1% possibly could tell Nintendo this is what we want in the future. So, I don't know. What a great summer so far. Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door remade, and it's really good. It's really fun. Uh, and it's just, it's such a soulful game. This game has soul. And, and that's what I'm looking for in a Paper Mario game. Thanks for listening to me ramble. I gotta go to bed, but uh, 
I will definitely be playing through this game many times through my rest of my life and uh, until they remake again in 20 years and somehow find a way to make it even better, I guess. I don't know. All right. Check it out. It's a good game. It's a very good game. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.